Okay. Okay. So um, today we are going. This this is actually what I consider that like one of the most important chapters. So chapter three, we're going to talk about the external environment. Okay, and we kind of look at that like when we are doing the BSG game. We kind of go through the industry report and sort of like the external environment. But um, <clears throat> the uh, external environment, actually, before we start like going into the company's industry, we actually uh, need to also look at the macro environment. Okay, so the macro environment is like the broad, um, um, things in the environment that we are in. Okay. So some examples. So the pesto. Pesto is the macro environment that we were talking about. Political, you know, the political system, the political situation, okay, and then economic. Like now we are um, facing the high inflation rate. Tomorrow we will know the CPI index. So we will see uh, whether or not inflation is kind of under control or is still kind of high. What do you guys think? Like you guys do grocery shopping, right? Yeah. Do you still see like the price going up or stay high? Like does this still go up? I think some things are staying. Yeah. Some things are going up like eggs are dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eggs yeah. are crazy. Yeah. Even even the gas, I noticed like a few weeks ago it was like 3.1, 3.2. Now it becomes 3.5 again. Yeah. Yeah. So um yeah, so that's the economic situation that all the company has to face, okay? And then social context, and then our technological, environmental, and legal. So we are going to like go um, one by one to see what those are, okay? So um, the political factors are like the policies, like the uh, different processes, like um, I was just listening to the news before I came here, um, before I walked into the office. So Ford is going to um, work with the Chinese battery company. They're going to get their technology. And they're going to build factories in uh, Michigan to, to build the, the batteries for their EVs, okay? So, um, <clears throat> oh, oh, so, so one of the reason is because now the government is um, uh, promoting the environmental friendly stuff like EVs. So the um, car companies, they actually get tax credit if they build something in the United States, in, um, in our country, they get some tax credit. On the other hand, when they sell their EVs, um, the consumer, we get some uh, tax credit as well, okay? So they try to promote this business. And so that's why they finally, they decided, okay, we're going to work with this company to get their technology to build a cheaper battery, okay? So that's how um, this might affect, you know, how companies make decisions. So the first factor is political factors, okay? Different uh, policies. And then economic condition. <clears throat> so like we talk about inflation rate, the interest rate, okay, it will affect how company make decisions. Like you guys, when you are doing your PhD game, you, uh, there's one option is to get a loan, right? So in the game, the interest rate is affected by your credit ratings. But in reality, in addition to credit ratings, uh, interest rate is also affected by, um, the um, the base rate from Fed, okay? So Fed now the rate is I think 4.75%. So whatever rate we get from the bank will be higher than that because bank also need to make profit. So that's, um, that's uh, the, the interest uh, Fed is going to charge the bank when they get money from Fed. So that's why they need to, you know, charge us more. <clears throat> so that's the economic condition. And then the social cultural factor, you know, in different, even in uh, one, like sometimes we, when we talk about social culture, 
thing. Um, we will say, oh, when we go to different countries, they will have different culture. But even in the same country, you know, sometimes we might have different cultural, different, you know, social um, um, value or attitude. <clears throat> so for example, um, let's see, like now I think a lot of, especially with in your, your generation, more and more young people, they value healthy lifestyle, okay? Compared to my generation, we don't really care that much when we were young, you know, we, we just eat like a lot of meat, you know, eat whatever we want, drink a lot. And I think now the younger people, you guys are more conscious about, you know, what you eat. And I don't know if it's true, but from what I heard, like my daughter and her friends, and then some of you guys, like, I know you guys like really care what you eat and you try to eat very healthy, right? So, but it wasn't like that when I was young. So, so like it depends on different, you know, generations and different locations as well. Okay, it's like, um, I have a friend. <clears throat> He um they live in a in a, a small town in Texas, and that town is very religious, conservative. So the town, like one day in their town hall meeting, they decided to ban all the um nudity in town. So they wanted to get rid of all the strip club. Okay. So, but they say, you know, all the nudity is the public nudity is banned except for art purpose. So like if you need to draw something, you know, then then it's okay. Like, or if you are exhibit, you are going to exhibit for some art, it's okay. Okay, for public nudity. So guess what happened? Um, so in that environment, in theory, the street club, you know, usually shouldn't shouldn't survive, right? So guess what I do? Do you what they do, but the street clubs are still running. But what do they do to, to respond to that kind of, this is like a little bit related to social culture, but they make it into a law. So it becomes the next one, the, like the regulation. So what, what can, so sometimes I'm trying to say, even though sometimes the macro environment might seem not working for the business, but business usually find a way to go around it. So guess what I did? How do they how do they still stay open without violating the law? No. So so they they instead of like <clears throat> so everybody when they enter the, the club, they will be given one pencil. So that means when they walk in, they're doing art. <laughs> yeah, so that's how that's how a business can get around it. But you know, still, it will affect how we do business. Like some places, I think in Pennsylvania, in Pennsylvania, wait, yeah, in Pennsylvania, um, Wegman sells alcohol. But other than that, does Walmart? I don't see Walmart have. Do you guys see Walmart sell beers and alcohol and stuff? Yeah. How come Wegman can sell? Yeah, so see, this is this is the thing. I, I don't understand in Pennsylvania, but I know when I was in Tennessee, no groceries, like there's no liquor store there. Okay, no liquor store. Um, so you usually have to drive to Kentucky to buy buy alcohol or beer. Okay, so that's you know, so um <clears throat> so. So it depends on the different um, areas, social, cultural, you know, factors affect, you know, how um, business can do things there. And then we have technological factor. The technological factor is, you know, how the um, technology can work um, in different places. Okay. And then environmental, um, or just like weather, like climate. Um, <clears throat> I think when um, when um, FedEx or UPS, when they try to decide where will be their hub, where, where they want to have their headquarter, I think they were considering like Chicago. Chicago is actually, if you look at the map of the world, 
it's like in the center of the world. And it's actually when you go from Chicago to, to Asia or Chicago to Europe, it's actually the, the most convenient way, okay, compared to New York. New York to Asia is kind of far. And then LA to Europe is also kind of far. So Chicago is actually, you know, the closest to all these places. Yeah. So um, UPS or FedEx, when they were considering Chicago for their headquarters. But then, because Chicago has snows really, in the winter, really bad snows, and then the Chicago airport always have delays. So eventually, um, I think it's FedEx. Eventually, they decided they want to have their headquarters in Memphis because Memphis is a little bit south. But you see, Memphis is like like straight like uh, straight south from Chicago. So from Memphis, if we want to go to Europe or Asia, still not that far. But the weather is much better. So that's the environmental um, forces, <clears throat> and then the legal re re regulatory factors like the one that we were using. You know where they ban all the uh, public nudity, so they it's it's they they make the law because of the culture, but then it's becoming a law or regulatory factors. So and then for us for the uh, liquor um, store, yeah. So like Pennsylvania, that that part I don't understand why a Wegman can sell liquor, but not you know all other grocery stores because I remember when I go to, when I went to um, Costco in New Jersey, they sell alcohol there, but not the Costco in Pennsylvania, okay? So that's probably by some kind of law that we don't really understand, but maybe I can I can ask around and see what happened. Yeah, so this is the different um, major component for macro environment. <clears throat> and then, after the, ma ma um, the macro environment, the pastel factors, the macro environment, everybody, different, all different industry has to face it, like the interest rate, okay, inflation rate affect everybody um, in the world, right? But <clears throat> if you are in different industries, you're facing also some kind of different environment because of the five um, forces that you know, we're going to look into. So when um, this guy, this guy from Harvard, his name is Michael Porter. So he thinks that, well, how come, you know, no matter how the economy is, you know, how bad the economy is, how good the economy is, some industry, they are just making good money, okay? Like the pharmaceutical industry, always make good money, right? And then some industry just barely make it, okay? So he's like, so why? So he, he thinks that there are five forces that um, make one industry attractive or unattractive, okay? So we look at the five forces. If like if the industry like is strong in all these five forces, like they have to face all strong forces there, that means they are trying, like they squeeze themselves to survive. Okay, so first one is the competition from rival sellers. Oops, sorry. So that means the competition from your competitors. Okay, so how competitive this industry is? Um, in let's say, let's say in pharmaceutical company. Okay, like we have Moderna. Let's say just the COVID vaccine, Moderna, we have what, Pfizer, and we have, what is the other one? Johnson & Johnson, right? So we have three pharmaceutical companies, but <clears throat> do they really compete like, like crazy to, to sell their vaccine? Not necessary. we don't really see that. Like, even though they have, we have three suppliers, but we don't see that really lower their price, but it's still expensive to get the vaccine. Well, we, for us, it's covered, but when they sell it to um, different countries, it's the price is very expensive. Okay, so <clears throat> we don't see really see that. But on the other hand, if you see um, um, the rivalries between Coke and Pepsi, okay, that we will see, right? Like usually, 
if we go to grocery store and the Pepsi is on sale, you usually see Coke also, they will, they will lower their price. So they compete like one by one very closely. <coughs> and yeah, so that's the you know, competitions from the from your rival. And then we have competitions from uh, potential new entrant. So sometimes if, if even if we don't have comp like the competition among other sellers in the industry, sometimes maybe the competition is not that strong, but if we are making good money, okay? And then it's not difficult to get in. It's not difficult to, to come in to uh, start a business in this industry. Then, you know, we will face a possible future competitor, right? So, so we also look at the um, potential new entrant. So that's where we, I call it barrier to entry. So see if it's easy to enter this industry. If it's not, then even when, maybe in the beginning, we are making a lot of money, but if it's easy to enter, then, you know, we will start to have a lot of competitors and then, you know, competition become really strong and then, you know, we won't make the good um, profit anymore. <clears throat> so that's the second um, forces. And then the third force is substitute. Okay, so even though uh, we might have high, um, um, entry barrier, but it might like, let's say airline, okay, airline. So airline, they, um, they compete, like when we purchase airline ticket, we look at the price, right? We just Google, Google go to Google Fly, and then put in the, the uh, what is it, the, where we are flying from, and then our destination, and then pick the cheapest flight, right? So they will compete with the, the, the price a lot. And even though, like if they are making good money and it seems very sexy to own an airline, right? But it's still expensive, right? Even if we just uh, rent or lease an airplane, it's still expensive, okay? So maybe the new entrant is not that easy, but how about the substitute? If it's so, if like now it's so expensive to, to travel by plane, Okay, unless it's like international, you know, we have to, if I want to go back to Taiwan, I, that's what I have to pay, okay? <clears throat> so unless it's that, like if I'm going to hmm, Chicago and the flight ticket is like a thousand dollars, if it's you, will you fly there or will you drive? Drive, right? So driving probably costs us less than $200, right? So if it's like for the whole family, we we'll probably just drive, okay? So the substitute depends on, you know, how, whether or not there is substitute, whether or not it's possible to have substitute. So for airlines, the substitute would be like train, like um, you drive on your own, okay? Or bus, right? So a lot of substitute for that. So that's the third force. And then um, the supplier's bargaining power. So that means when we buy stuff from our suppliers, they get to set the price. Even if we buy a lot, it's difficult for us to bargain the price. Okay. So one, let's use airline as an example again. So when airlines purchase the gas for the, for the aircraft, do they get to, even though like um, United American Airlines, they are huge airline, but do you think they get some kind of special discount for the gas? Or when the gas price go up, they pay higher price. When the gas price go down, they might be able to pay lower price, right? So it's like it, the, the price is already set. So they, they don't have a lot of bargaining power to their supplier, so that means the supplier have strong bargaining power, okay? <laughs> so that's one, one um, another force. And then the customer bargaining power. So sometimes, believe it or not, sometimes we have choice, like as a customer, we have choice. Sometimes we don't have choice, okay? So when we have choice, then like, like we talk about airline ticket, okay? We look at the price, and then if it's, we think it's cheap, we will buy it. Okay, 
So sometimes we have choice, but sometimes um, if we really want something really bad, okay, like even though it's expensive, we might still buy it. The one example <coughs> I personally experienced is Apple iPhone. Okay, so iPhone, I think it's still overpriced, but when I have new model, do I get it? I usually get it at every two years or three years. Okay, so I still get it. Like I feel like I don't. Um, how should I put it? Like I don't want to get it, but I still get it because my phone get become really slow, and I don't want to deal with switching to different brand. So I have to get it. So in this case, I feel like I don't have bargaining power, but actually I could, but they make the, so when we talk about the customer bargaining power, there's something called switching costs. Is it easy for us to switch to another product or service? If it's yes, then the switching costs will be low. So the customer, we will have strong bargaining power, but Apple, they make their phone so convenient, connect with everything. So they make the, and then like now um, we have, what is it? I have the Apple one, okay? Because I don't have enough space for all the photos, all the videos. So I have to buy the uh, iCloud, um, what is it? iCloud space, right? And then I just keep upgrading it because I don't have enough space. So now I'm getting, I think, one T at cloud. And then as I get one T, I forgot how much it is. It doesn't make sense to just use it. So I just get the Apple One because it, it gives you like one T for the whole family. And then it add, you can get like free Apple Music and then the Apple TV Plus or whatever, right? So I get all these, but it's like $30 every month. And I feel like, and I can switch that because like now I, I really, like this time, I really wanted to switch to an Android phone. And then my daughter is like, no, I have all my music on your app. So see, they make it very difficult, even though, you know, the, so the switching cost doesn't, you don't count switching costs as like just monetary value, because maybe if I switch to Google Pixel, it will be cheaper for me, I, I think, but I'm not sure. So if I switch, it might be cheaper for me, okay? But I have to deal with my daughter like whining, you know, about the music and stuff because she already created like very sophisticated Apple music list for her, like wherever she go, like if we have different hours of trip, she will have different um, music list. Yeah, so she's like, no. And then we also have, we bought some movie under um, Apple account. So, you know, it's just, it's just inconvenient. So they just make the switching cost too high for us, make it too difficult for us to switch. So kind of, you know, our bargaining power is neutralized. Okay, so, so there are ways to, to um, control some of this. So we can use this to analyze the industry, but the company itself, the company, different company, they have different ways to neutralize different forces here, okay? Sometimes you might feel like there's nothing you can do, like you feel helpless, like the company maybe feel helpless in that situation, but actually, you know, there are ways to go around it. So this is the five forces analysis. I was screaming so hard yesterday. So my throat is, is hurting, yeah. So for um so to use five forces analysis, you know, we should try to like look at the the five forces one by one, okay? And then how strong each forces is in the industry, and then think of a way to see whether or not we can kind of neutralize it. Like for another example, the um the customers purchase a bargaining power. So like when we use a cell phone carrier, they make a sign contract. Right? If you want to get free phone, you have to sign contract for two years. So then you have, you don't have any, you cannot switch to another phone company. 
right? You just have to pay because you signed a contract for two years, right? So they that's how they neutralize the bargaining power, okay? By signing, making a signing contract with them, okay? <clears throat> so one time I remember, one time I had, AT, like several years ago, I had at and So they made me sign a contract with them for two years because I, I wanted a, I think I wanted an iPhone 4. That's the first iPhone I have. So I wanted an iPhone 4 and I signed a two years contract. And then I traveled back to Taiwan for one month. When I came back, my phone bill was, anybody want to guess? Because I use international data. I, I actually use a lot of Wi-Fi there, but I didn't know if you don't close the, the roaming, um, they still use it even when you're connected to Wi-Fi. What do you want to take a guess? Huh? Yes, 900 something, $980 for one month. Yeah, I was so angry. I was really angry, but I can't do anything because, you know, I signed contract with them. Yeah, so, um, but then when my contract is up after two years, when I find out, oh, T-Mobile has this promotion, I can also get a free phone. So I just immediately switched to T-Mobile. T-Mobile has like unlimited international data, okay? But, but, so they say, oh, one line is like $50, but every every month, um, af when, after we add up all the stuff, I remember in the beginning, I have to pay around $180 for two lines. Yeah, so still, somehow we ended up paying a lot. Yeah, but now I found, um, now I have five lines. I found another three family member <laughs> into my family plan. So it's like uh, two hundred dollars divided by five. Yeah. <clears throat> so so you know so they have different ways to um to um change or kind of manipulate the different um um forces. <coughs> And um, so these are some of the some of the factors that we can take look like take a look to see to identify whether or not um, the forces like in this case is the rivalry among the industry in the industry. So if the demand is growing slowly, then your competition might be fierce. Okay, or your product become Sorry. So if your product become um, less differentiated, so then that means the consumer, we are going to buy whatever is cheaper, right? If it's all the same. So that's why companies, they will try to find ways to try to differentiate their product. So one example I can think of is, was the trash bag, okay? So the trash bag, usually when we go buy trash bag, if we know this is this trash bag is durable, it doesn't break easily, then we will pick, you know, among those, we'll pick the cheapest, right? Nobody really cares, like, oh, I have to get this brand, right, for trash bag. Until one time I went to um, the grocery store, there's this trash bag on sale, okay? It's on sale. So I, I was like, oh, let me, it's cheapest, so let me try. And then when I try, I realize it's scented. Okay, so when I realize, oh, it's scented, and whenever you know the thing that bothers me a lot is when I try to tie my trash, it stinks because the trash inside becomes you know stinks. So so <clears throat> so I hate it when I tie the trash and it stinks. But now it has the scented trash bag, so it doesn't stink anymore. So that's why now, even though they don't have the they don't have the lower price, but when they go buy the trash bag, I always look for the scented trash bag. So they try to differentiate the product. Okay. And even um what is so a lot of a lot of companies 
they actually try to do that. Like um, last time we talked about the we, we talk about the liquid debt, right? I tried to find it, I couldn't find it. Oh, I didn't go to the dollar store. I went to different gas stations, a different, I went to like Oma, Wise, and so Why is that? Oh, I didn't see that. Okay, so let me let me check this next time when I go to. I just went this morning. I didn't I didn't see that. Yeah. So yeah, so so they try to make it different. Like now they have different. They design the water bottle look differently. Like some look slim and look nice, right? And then some they have this cap that you can just you know. So it feels like it's. It's nicer. So some people might be willing to pay a little bit more to get those kind of water. Yeah. <coughs> and my brother, actually, this time he um, oh, he actually um, had a bottle of water also in a metal bottle, and it's um the pH level is like eight point seven or something. You guys know that. So what do you call the pH level A point something? It's um so when it's when the pH level is seven, it's water, it's neutral. So when it's lower than seven, it's like acid. But when it's higher than seven, it's what? Huh? Is it? I don't know the English term. Yeah, I don't know the English term. So that is supposed to help with our body. And he said that it's supposed to like neutralize his he has gout, gout but so it's supposed to neutralize the gout. So he drink that. I was like, wow, this bottle looks nice. So he told me this bottle is forty dollar per bottle. I was, I was like, what forty dollars? He tricked me because then I look it up. It's like one, but it's still expensive. It's like um twelve bottle uh forty eight dollars so for one bottle is four dollars yeah so I said wow and at first he's like yeah so I can only drink this like once very long time <laughs> and I said wow I can't I, I still can't believe you actually spent forty dollars for a bottle of water because he's a he's an accountant he's very very frugal so <laughs> that's why I said I can't believe you actually spend that much money in a bottle of water. And I said, do you know Costco have the, 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 um, the water that's the pH level is like 7.8. It's also, what do you call basic? Actually, I don't know alkaline. Uh, what? Alkaline. Yeah, yeah, alkaline, yes. Yeah. So also alkaline water. So I said, Costco have that for the whole, like, um, I don't know, like 20 or 24 bottles. It's like eighteen dollars, much cheaper. Then you can drink more. And he's like, "I shake you." It's <laughs> yeah. He, he got that bottle for free. He just he just used the bottle. Yeah. So anyway, so so the companies, you know, when this happened, like when we have more identical product, it would become difficult. So they have to compete in price unless they find a way to um, differentiate the product, okay? So that's for the um, rivalries among the industry. <clears throat> and then <clears throat> the entry, um, the ba entry barrier, okay? <clears throat> so, <clears throat> um, so like the dot com in two two thousand in the beginning of two thousand, a lot of dot com started. So basically, if you know how to write a computer program, you can start a dot com, right? In at that time, so there are thousands of dot com, and then because some dot coms were successful, they make a lot of money. So people just keep the computer scientists; they just keep starting their own companies, right? So, <clears throat> so the thing is that how do we? make the entry barrier higher so we don't have when when our industry is making money it's attractive we don't attract new entrants okay so that the competition become you know worse so <clears throat> how do we do that so one way to do it is 
um, through like if they if they can hire like if they can afford a lobbyist, they can have a lobbyist to set a regulation. Okay, like a liquor license. Like sometimes some companies they already have the liquor license, so they will try to lobby the the township to change the regulation. Like hey, you know they are like they are a lot of um, drunken drive accidents and stuff. We should ban the liquor stuff here or. We should not give liquor license anymore. Okay, so sometimes it's how what company do, and then sometimes you can make your company so um grow so big. So even though they try to start a company, but the the scale of the awareness of the market is not as big as yours, so they can never keep up with you. Okay, so <clears throat> those are some of the ways to um to make sure the entry barrier is high. And also on top of that, when, when we um, sometimes some industry become, um, it's easy to enter, but when it become um, difficult to, to do business, it will be difficult to get out. Okay, for some industry, it's difficult to get out like um, airlines. So because you already have the airline, airplanes and stuff, and you have contract with, you know, different airport and stuff. So if you get out, you still have to, you know, um, honor the contract you already signed. So it's difficult to get out. So they have to, they got stuck in the industry. You know, they have to continue to, to operate. Yeah. So, 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 <clears throat> Another way to um, uh, make the entry barrier higher is build your brand name strong, okay, so that the, your customer is loyal to your brand. Like I said, the Apple uh, product, a lot of Apple users are very loyal to um, Apple product. <clears throat> and then the network effect, then like how I got stuck because of the, um, because of the, the iCloud all my videos and photos in there, okay? And then um, friends that are using iMessage, if, if like a lot of times when we text people, <coughs> if it's not blue, when you do iMessage, it's blue, right? So when my friends text become green, I was like, you change your phone? You don't use iPhone anymore? Yeah, so, so something like that, yeah. <clears throat> so, um, so those are, you know, some of the things that we can do to um, to make the entry barrier higher, okay, so that we won't create our own competitors. <laughs> and then we have the substitute. Yes, okay? how do we um, like sometimes some um, some product they just have substitute and sometimes. It's difficult to see that coming. And nowadays, everything is like, for example, uh, Starbucks. So what is coffee substitute? Tea, water, right? But does Starbucks sell them? Starbucks, do they sell tea? I said, does Starbucks sell tea or water? Starbucks. 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 Yeah. So they sell coffee, but the coffee substitute, but they also sell tea. They sell water and they sell, they now sell sandwich. So are they competing with McDonald's? No? Or is McDonald's the competitor or substitute? Because McDonald's also have ice cold coffee. Yeah. So no, but it, this is the thing that you have to identify when you try to look at, you know, the substitute and the competitors, okay? So in theory, they are not in the same category, right? One is Facebook, one is Cafe, but they are also somewhat sell similar stuff, right? So if I want to get McDonald's breakfast and my daughter want um, Starbucks, sandwich, then 
McDonald lose their sales to Starbucks. So it's sort of like competitor or, you know, yeah. Okay, so, <clears throat> um, so that's, the, you know, that's something that we have to be careful of. How about for your ethnic shoes? What would be your shoes substitute? What's ethnic shoes substitute? Ethnic shoes substitute. Oh no. It would be difficult, right? Because it's it could be um the dress shoes. Is dress shoes substitute or work competitor for the sneakers? What what do you mean no? So you guys are selling ethnic shoes, right? For your PSG game. It says sneakers. Right? So what would the dress shoes be your competitor or substitute? Hmm? Competitor, right? Yeah. Or substitute. <laughs> substitute. No, there's no right or right, right or wrong answer here. Because you are the one that if you really, I'm saying if you really run the company, you'll be the one that identify laws and then make analysis. So you have to decide whether or not this is substitute or you decide to ignore them, look at them as um, substitute or you want to treat them as competitor, like Nike. Would Nike compete with, um, um, let's say, Ardo? 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 <laughs> I don't know if I say it right. A-L-D-O? Yeah. Yeah. Right? A-L-D-O? Like Italian shoes. Okay, what is the dress shoes you guys know? Let's say crop. Let, let's not say Dress shoes. Let's say Crocs. Would Nike compete with Adidas? Um, what is the other one? Um, Reebok, Under Armour, or Crocs? Timberland, uh, North Face. Are they substitute or competitor? So that's something you guys, you know, not not for the game, but if one day you are working in a company, that's, that's, that, that's what I said, getting difficult because there are some overlap. Like Apple, Apple started to, what is the thing they started to sell? <sighs> oh, Apple, now the Apple TV, you know, I realized their movies, their TV shows are actually good. So they are into, um, um, what is it? Entertainment, yeah, streaming, and then um, the uh, subscriber, right, subscription. So they are, are they competing with Google? Or are they competing with Samsung? Or are they competing with Netflix, right? So that's something you have to kind of identify when you are um, analyzing the industry. <clears throat> and then we have suppliers bargaining power. So, um, it depends on sometimes whether or not you rely on this particular supplier. Okay, if you I can only get a special product from this supplier, then maybe you know they will have strong bargaining power. Okay, or if um, they have something nobody else has, then and then that's important to you. You cannot replace that material with anything else. Then they are important to you. Okay, and then they some and then they will know that they can decide how much they are going to sell you the price at. So so laws will affect how strong the supplier's power. Okay, and then we have the buyer's bargaining power. And like we say, if whether or not it's easy for us for the buyer 
to switch to different company? If yes, then they have strong bargaining power. If not, if you kind of sign contract with them, then you you are okay with that. That that you don't have a strong buyer bargaining power. Okay, don't face strong bargaining power. So that's actually good. <clears throat> so it just depends on different situation and whether or not you are going to um, um, find a way to neutralize those powers. Okay. So this is the how we look at different industry. And after we use five courses to um, look at the industry, to understand the industry, um, we could also um, try to, sometimes we need to also identify, you know, what exactly is the factors that drive the industry change, okay? And then what, how, what kind of impact they have. So sometimes, <coughs> like for your shoe company, um, you might be able to figure out um, how many models you are going to sell, okay? And how much money you want to sell it at, how much the price, and then um, whether or not you get celebrities. So this might affect how much or how many shares how many pairs of shoes you can sell in different market? <coughs> and um, sometimes the technological change might also affect how we um, compete. Like for example, um, Canon. Canon is a camera company. They are the one that in, invented the digital camera. Okay, so before that, they didn't they didn't realize when they invented the digital camera, they actually killed their film, the negative film market. Because now people is not not is not going to use the traditional camera where we have to develop film. Develop film? Yeah. To yeah, to 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 how do you call that? Print out the photos. Now everything is you know digital. Okay. So they actually, but they actually invented the digital camera. And then, you know, they lost another um, market, okay? So sometimes those are, you know, something that will make the change, the technology, oops, the technology will make the change, okay? So, um, and then before we know it, like, I, I don't know if you guys experienced that, but when Netflix started, when Netflix started, do you know what I did? You have to pay, you still have to pay the membership fee. Like I think every month we pay like three dollars or something, and we get three CDs. So you get to or DVDs, you get to pick the movies you want to watch. And then if if I like if I pay $2.99, $3, I get three CDs every time until I return it. Right. So I will pick movies and I get three CDs. So when I return one, you know, they will send me another one. And if I return three, they send me another three. So I, the most I can get is three. So they started with DVD. <clears throat> and before I know it, everything is online now, right? I can barely find anything that actually play the DVD. Does anybody still have DVD player? I don't see it. And can you still use it? And do you still use it? With what? Wow. Okay. Yeah, I have I have a lot of DVD, but I already kind of just put it in the basement and didn't touch it at all. Yeah. So and I can bear like I bought. I remember when my daughter was like small, I bought a lot of um storytelling CDs in Chinese. Try to make her listen to Chinese, and then so I bought a lot of CDs from Taiwan. And then I couldn't find any CD player. Like when I tried to, um, I remember one year um, when I tried to get the Black Friday sales, I went to Walmart, went to all different websites. I cannot find any CD players. Yeah. And now all our computers, our computer don't have any CD player, like CD-ROM or anything. 
right? You have, does your computer, like even my MacBook, my MacBook Air doesn't have USB. Does yours have? Yeah, they change it. So, so it's just, you know, it's just, um, I don't know why I talk about it, but the technology will actually change how, you know, um, company compete. Yeah. So, um, so we, we need to also look at, you know, how, what? The question, and are you going to have to dissolve Are you going to go over that at all? I will try, but I would, did you watch the video? I went to, I went to um, YouTube, only two people watch it for the video. But today, well, actually today I can, because now it's already reset. So whatever I see, it's already 100, 100, 100. It's already go back to year, the beginning of year 11. So <clears throat> yeah, okay. So, but you can go watch the videos. So, but I can, I can, if you have questions, you can ask and then I can answer your question. But not, uh, after this, I'll, you know, we will go there. So, another thing. So we understand the driving force, we understand the industry, but the most important thing is strategic group. So in the same industry, some companies might have the similar strategy as you. And this actually, you can find this on BSG game, okay? So for example, like that you have same um, product line, right? Like you will sell similar numbers of models of shoes, okay? And you offer similar product attribute to the buyers, okay? Offer similar services. So those will make different strategic moves. And then, you don't need to do strategic group mapping, but it's a technique that where we can we find two variables that's not correlated too much. And we can use those two variables to uh, map out every company's um, um, different strategic focuses. Okay, so to uh, make a strategic group map, you know, we pick two characteristics that we think is important and they are they are not supposed to be correlated they are not they should be somewhat independent okay so <clears throat> for example so usually we don't pick price and quality at the same time because usually high price means high quality right so they are highly correlated correlated okay so usually we we'll, we'll do Price quality as one variables, and then the geographic coverage over the product line and how many models you have. Okay, all, all this. So the how many models you have and price quality, they might not be related. Okay. So that's the strategic group mapping. And it should look like this. Like in this example, we have the price quality here this side and then we have geographic market scope so we have <clears throat> here they are a relatively cheaper um cheaper product that miller miller pools um the um and house of bush but wiser and then we have this best okay so they are bigger they are um in a bigger market like they have raw market and um, they are relatively cheap. But we have Bosa beer, they are also well known, okay? But they are a little bit more expensive. Then we have the England and Sun, they are a little bit smaller, their market share will be a little bit smaller, and they are also expensive. And then we have a lot of micro breweries that they, they, you can see like their market share is kind of very small, smaller um, circle, and they are very expensive but they are in a very narrow um, geographic market, like usually just local. And usually I think one, one glass is like $12, $15, right? <coughs> but it's a, a special um, beer they design. So those are the difference. That, and they are competing with each other. They are not going to compete with Bud Light, right? Or whatever, Blue Moon. Did you guys watch the commercial? 
for Miller and Coors. And then they say, oh, this is actually for Blue Moon, commercial for Blue Moon. You guys remember? Yeah. I was like, damn. So, <laughs> so, so this is, you know, this is to help us to identify who is your direct competitor. So I'm going to show you from the, oh, shoot. Now we cannot see that. But from PSG game, you should be able to. If we go to the industry report, um, so in here, we should see different circle everywhere, but now because the game reset, everybody is in the same place, so it's all the same. Everybody's market share is the same, so we cannot see that. Can you put on your program? Uh, no, because it's reset. There's no 12, year 12. Yeah. <clears throat> so, yeah. So you have to watch the video. But the game starts from scratch now. Okay, so whatever you, we did before, it doesn't, doesn't, um, doesn't matter now. But I hope you remember what you did and which team are you in? D. I think D improved, right? I think C and D both improved. Yeah, I don't have, I, I can play the video if you want. So yeah, so, so this is the um, chapter. So here, that's why we use strategic group map. So next time after um, we have the year 11 result, I can show you guys how to look at this to identify. But you can see here, this is a product line, right? So we have 50 models to 500 models. And we have the SQ rating. Okay, so you can kind of identify who is your direct competitor there. Okay, when we next week, this, unfortunately, this week we don't have much left. Any questions? No questions? Do you want to work on your PSG game? <clears throat> okay, so this is it for today. Okay, and <clears throat> if no questions, I'm going to. Anybody want to reset their quiz? So if no questions, I'll um, let you guys work on the game and you can raise your hand if you have questions uh, about the game. Okay, but now actually just, you know, you just, um, yep. Uh, March 2nd, but you can do it now. I think it's available already now. So you can do it now. And if you want me to reset it before due date, I can still reset it. Okay, so second quiz. But make sure when you email me, make sure you are telling me you are from industry one or two or Monday class or online class, because then I can find you, okay? <clears throat> yes, and then reset quiz one and two. Which one you want me to reset, okay? I Okay, so I let you guys work on the PhD game.